Welcome back and good morning. We are in another devotion together as we have been looking at Christmas songs. Songs that highlight the aspect of the incarnation of Christ, the season of Advent. And as we're wrapping up these devotions for 2021, I wanted to conclude with a couple more great Christmas songs that I think you'll enjoy. Now what we did in the last two installments is we looked at a couple of older songs and uh, quite frankly, these two songs that we looked at may be completely new to you. Lo, how a rose air blooming, and thou didst leave thy throne. But now taking kind of an opposite approach, while instead of looking at two older songs, I'd like to look at two newer songs, songs that have been written within the last five to ten years. And the first of these songs that highlight the Christmas story for us is one that we learned together last year called O come, all you unfaithful. Now, I know at first the title probably gets a reaction from people because they think it might be a play on words or it might be a joke of the common song we all know and love, O come, all ye faithful. But no, rather this song is titled, O come, all you unfaithful. And the point of this song was written to remind us that yes, Christmas is wonderful. Yes, the season of Advent is joyous. But yet at the same time, as with any part of the year, we bring our hopes and we bring our fears. We bring our, our strengths and our failures with us. Sometimes these are moments of brokenness for people. Moments of weariness. Moments of sadness and remembering tragic events that have happened in their lives. Reminders that the normal that they used to love and enjoy isn't there. That they've had to find new normals in the midst of tumultuous circumstances and trials of life. I've had to experience some of that myself in the last few years. But yet, the beauty of this song is that it communicates the simplistic yet powerful truth that Christ came for us. So this song was actually written just last year in 2020 by Sovereign Grace Music. It was on their new album, Heaven Has Come, which I'd commend to you if you're looking for some good Christmas music to listen to during this time of the year. And it was designed to be used for uh, an assurance of pardon or as a call to worship in the overall liturgy of the church. Now, while we do have a call to worship, we don't have per se, an assurance of pardon. Yet, the way that I've commonly structured the liturgy for us as a church is that the third song in our, what you might call a set list or a body of songs that we sing on a given Sunday does kind of entail this idea, this assurance of pardon. It's a song that is chosen each week to remind us that while we are sinners, Christ Pay the ultimate price for us. Christ is our Redeemer. Christ is our Savior. That is the focal point in the gospel narrative that reminds us that because of what he has done, we are made alive. We are justified by faith through him. And so while we don't call it the assurance of pardon, it really does kind of do the same thing. It's a reminder for us in our service as a doorway of what Christ has done and how we can know him in a real and personal way. So also to think about the song, it's been translated in both Spanish and Romanian. So Sovereign Grace often gets approached by different ethnic groups of people. I know some of their songs have been translated into Chinese recently in the last couple of years. So it's great to see how other bodies of faith and other languages are using songs like these in their articulation of the gospel each Lord's Day. So what I want to do is I want to read through the text and take it in chunks by verse, by bridge, by chorus, and show you some of the theology, the verses that relate to what is being said here in the text. So in verse 1 it says, O come, all you unfaithful, come, weak and unstable. Come, no, you are not alone. And this reminds me of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. 
It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. As it highlights there that, that phrase, come know that you're not alone. Look, this song is going to remind us throughout that we do fall short of the glory of God. That yes, we do fail. That yes, we are broken people. But yet we have healing and peace and strength and comfort through Christ. Verse 2 says, O come, barren and waiting ones, weary of praying, come, see what your God has done. And this reminds me of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then in that short, simple little chorus, it says, Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. It takes us to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, where it says, You will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. And we get to repeat that throughout this song a couple of different times. Verse 3 then picks up and says, O come, bitter and broken, come with fears unspoken, come, taste of his perfect love. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 27, it says, And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Friends, yes, there are times that we come and we don't even know how to articulate the angst that is in our hearts, the fear, the trepidation, the anxieties. Yet this song bids us come to taste of the perfect love of Christ. And then verse 4, it says to us, O come, guilty and hiding ones, there is no need to run. See what your God has done. Which takes us to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. While, yes, we may be guilty before a holy God, there is no need to run as we see what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. And then as we sing that chorus again, that Christ is born for us, we move into this bridge moment where it says, He's the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon. His promise is peace for those who believe. And then it's repeated once more. These phrases take us to passages like Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In Revelation 5, verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. To receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Finally, we come to verse 5 in this song which says, So come, though you have nothing, come. He is the offering. Come, see what your God has done. Which takes us to passages like Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verse 3, For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, but sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. And Isaiah 55, verse 1, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. 
come by wine and milk without money and without price. So friends, as we sing this song together, as we have the opportunity this Lord's Day to sing it one more time in this Advent season, I pray that as you think on the text, that truly with joyful expression, you will exclaim with us, Christ is born for you. Friends, may we come because he is the offering. May we come to see what God has done. May we come regardless of what's bothering us, what's hurting us, or what elates us. Friends, let us gather in worship this Lord's Day. Come, taste and see that God is good and that it would affect the way we worship together this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also going to share with you one more modern Christmas song that we can look at from a theological standpoint. And we'll do that next time.